So today we're going to be talking about common sense. We're going to be talking about content rules. Now, one of the things I noticed is that we are on the type A track in here, right? So this is my family. This is the only part that I'm going to talk about being a dad. If you're here for parenting advice because of the type A part, you're in the wrong session. David Armano, yeah, get out of here, Julian. David Armano is doing a great session right now, and Jason Falls is doing a great session, and he has bourbon. So feel free to go if you need to, all right? But I wanted to put that in there when I saw I was on the type A track. I was like, oh, crap, I hope they don't think I'm talking about parenting. I'm talking about business and common sense and things you need to think about. So I just wanted to get that out there. So if you have to leave, go. Nobody's leaving. Okay, we're doing all right. So listen, this is the goal of today. I have just a really simple goal. I want to help you realize that you can have the coolest content in the world. You can be blogging, podcasting, taking photos. You can be doing all that stuff as a brand or as a blogger. But if you don't have basic business sense, if you don't have common sense, if you don't have manners, it won't matter. Because if you're a jerk, nobody cares how nice your blog post is. Nobody's going to look at your video if you don't have the basic business sense to engage with bloggers in the right way. I'm going to talk a lot about it from the brand aspect, talk about it from the blogger aspect. If you want to ask questions, I am not one of those that has to wait till the end. I love interaction, but you have to get on the microphone. If you're going to heckle me, please get on the microphone so they get it on the stream. And I mean it. Get up and just ask questions, please. Don't wait till the end. We'll have plenty of time, but please don't wait. So I've been creating content for a long, long time, right? I've been doing this since I was a little kid. And when we were little, right, we didn't care about the SEO value. We did not give a crap about page ranks and clout and plus ones. You get a piece of paper, get a pen, get an oatmeal box and a wooden spoon, right? And you play, you engage, you have fun doing this stuff. I have a blast doing it. I obviously hate painting. I love this, the picture down the lower left-hand corner. I'm obviously not happy with paintbrushes, and I still don't paint today, so maybe that's, that's why. Best assignment ever, I asked my dad to, to pull. I said, Dad, get me pictures of me doing something. And this is what he came back with. I love it. It's so much fun. I obviously like cookies, too. So, um, Thank you for the cookie, by the way. I'll eat it later. Um, but what I'm talking about is I've been doing this for a long time. I don't think about the fact of how am I going to make money doing this. Do I want to make money? Yes, we all do. Even if it's not our goal, even if we're not creating stuff to make money, We'd all, we would all love to make money for what we do, what we love doing, right? If anybody says no, you're lying. So keep this in mind, whenever, whatever you're going to do, that creating content is fun. It's a lot of fun. And if you have kids, encourage them. Big, I guess I am going to talk about parenting. I didn't mean to, but encourage them to chase what they love doing. So this is my definition of content. It's anything you create and share to tell your story. It's not rocket science, right? I mean, we've been, it, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, true story, a year ago when the book was getting ready to come out, I was like, do we need this book? Do people really need to understand what content is? Don't we all already get it? It's everything you're creating. So this is my definition of content as we're going into this conversation. This is my definition of common sense. And no, I didn't look it up in the dictionary because I didn't know, I, I was scared to see what it is. But let's face it, right? It's everything our parents try to teach us, and it's everything that you as a human should know. I hope to God nothing I say today makes you go, oh, I never thought about that. I really hope not, but you never know, because I, I work with a lot of different businesses, and some of this common sense stuff they really forget about. They just, they, they, they totally forget about it. So that's, those are the two parameters for today. Those are the definitions. All right. You need to embrace that you're a publisher. You need to start thinking like a publisher. Doesn't matter what you're doing. We're not making magazines. Some of us might be. I don't know. But you need to start thinking like a publisher. You've got to get in that mentality of, OK, I'm going to start creating content, whatever it is I'm doing. I'm going to do it on a regular basis. Here's the themes I'm going to write about. Here's the things I'm going to create around. The more you can do that, the more you can think about it, the better you're going to do. Now, I don't practice what I preach in this case sometimes. I, I suggest an editorial calendar. I think it's great to lay it out and think about it. But I'm also one of those things. I'll wake up tomorrow and be like, oh, I want to write about this, or I want to create a video about that. I'm not saying you should structure everything so it's, oh, on Tuesday I'm going to do this, but on Wednesday I'll do this. What I'm talking about is you need to think, if I'm going to create this video and I want to put it out there, I want people to watch it and engage with it, how am I going to do that? Creating the video is the easy part. How am I going to get people to see it? You know, am, I, am I going to push it out on Twitter? Am I going to push it out on Facebook? How am I going to do it? Am I going to do it all at once? Am I going to stagger it? Am I going to tell the story differently? 
And I hope you tell the story differently. If you're just pushing it out on all the channels, just throwing it out there, it doesn't work. You have the great opportunity to tell the story every time you post it. Twitter's only got 140 characters. Google Plus, a lot more characters. Facebook, a lot more characters. Use that space. So I love this. Here, here's, here's not embracing being a publisher, right? How many people, you know, if you work with consultants, you work with businesses, this is what they're talking about, right? This is what they think content marketing is all about. That doesn't work. It just doesn't work, not in today's world. How many people in this room have ever gotten pitched with a press release that said for immediate release? Right? All the time. All the, you never have? Let me put you on some lists and you'll gladly put mommy blogger on your title somewhere and you will start getting them. You write press releases? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so you're going to have fun yelling at me in a couple of minutes. No, I think mean, press releases are good. They have a purpose, right? People subscribe to them. There's nothing wrong with them. You don't use that phrase? All right, good, because I have a filter in my inbox that deletes them. It does. If I see forward immediate release in the subject line of my email, it goes into the trash, because I know that's nobody I really care about. You can put it in the regular text. But when you're reaching out to people, right, when you're trying to get people's attention, this isn't the way to do it. But a lot of people think it is. And I'm telling you, it is not. I've had clients fight me on this, say, no, 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 it works. Press releases are great. They serve their purpose. But make it something else when you're reaching out to people. Now, the whole publisher mentality, right? This is a survey that Marketing Profs and Junta42 did. They asked 1,000 business-to-business -business customers what the biggest challenge with content is. It was B2B, but I think that everybody in this room probably runs in this, no matter what level you're doing this at. You, know, you don't have enough time to create enough engaging content. You don't have the budget. You don't have the buy-in. Everybody runs into these problems. And I put this in, unfortunately, Tom Webster's not here. I put this in for him because I know he loves graphs and data and those sort of things. But this works for B2B. Right? This is a B2B slide, but I think it applies to every industry. So and, and C, everybody knows what C-level buy-in. I get asked what C-level buy-in is all the time, and I think that's C-suites, CMOs, CEOs. This also, take a look at this chart. I hope, yeah, you can see it, I hope. So this was also the same thing they asked them. They said, what are you creating for content? And what I love about this, so social media, no blogs is the number one thing. And I had to ask them, what does that mean? And it means everything else, if you're just tweeting or Facebooking. But then it starts, you know, article posting, in-person events, newsletters, blogs, videos is way down in the middle, microsites, mobile, ebooks. People think that content is just writing blog posts, making videos, maybe taking a picture now and then. It's all these things and more, right? Newsletters, super powerful. Events, when done right, generate tons of content. There's so many things you can do, and it's not just writing a blog post and making a stupid video with kittens, right? It can be anything. So take a look at that. Think about the next time you're going to start doing content. There's a lot more out there. There's so many options. And there's new tools every day coming out, right? You know, webinars, not overly sexy. Highly, highly effective if that's your right audience. So, Hugh McLeod, I love him to death. If you haven't seen the Gaping Void booth, go check him out. The funniest thing was I sent him my presentation. I sent him the title of my presentation, and he, and he said, I'll make a cartoon for your, for your presentation. I, all I gave him was the subject line, and this is what he makes me. He took it in a totally different way. So this is specifically for the bloggers, right? To think like a publisher. You are not magically going to make, forget millions, you're not going to make thousands, hundreds of dollars just by writing a blog, unless you're really lucky and really good. It doesn't come magically overnight. Retweets cannot be cashed in to pay your mortgage. You have to work really, really hard to make money at this stuff. I look around this room and I see people who I know are doing this full time, who are successful at doing this. And they will, if you ask any of them, they will tell you it's not easy. It did not come overnight. Right, Clay? I can see you nod. Yeah. <laughs> Dadlabs.com, if you're not watching it as a parent, is great. But there, you have to work really, really hard. This stuff does not come magically. And it worries me that so many people think it does. That's part of that common sense. You need to realize you've got to work really hard at it. All right. Speaking human. This one in this audience should be so easy. You want to talk like you do when you're sitting here inter introducing people and talking to them here. Why do we not talk that way online? Why do businesses think they have to talk in Franken-speak and marketing spin and press release buzzwords? I'm going to keep looking at you. <laughs> awesome. But you don't do voiceover work, right? With your vo Not today? So speak human. Speak like you usually do, right? 
And I always use this example. If the U.S. Army can speak human, you can too. Three years ago at Blog World, I met these guys. The Army was on the, the showroom floor, and I was like, what are you doing at Blog World? They had launched this program, Army Strong Stories. It's still going strong. This was the original one. It's nothing crazy, right? It's a WordPress site. But, but they, allowed the, they allowed any active duty or reserve soldier to blog. That was where it started. And they could write about anything they want. And I love this example because the guy's talking about how the importance of leave, how he gets to hang with his family, how great that is. That's not the traditional army stuff you would hear talking about, but they let them talk about it. And then it was so successful that they actually updated it. They allowed video. They allowed audio, pictures. They had a whole, they had, they had a whole platoon um, that had access to this in Afghanistan on the front lines writing. And the interesting thing about this is there's so many different voices. And you know the crazy part about this? This is the part that always gets businesses. They don't administrate it. They don't filter or edit it at all. The 18-year-old, true story, 18-year-old on the front lines of Iraq complaining and bitching and moaning, saying, why the hell are we here? I hate this mission. I'm hot. I miss my wife. Why the hell did I join the Army on this website? And I asked, I asked the gentleman, I said, well, how, how do you how do you allow that, you know? He said, listen, if that's going to keep somebody from joining the army, we really didn't need them in the first place because that one post scares them away. But they are so adamant about allowing them to have their human voice, to say what they want. And I just, there's, I have yet to meet a company that can fight me on this one because if they can do it, they have bombs and guns and they're in the, the line of fire and they're doing this. But they're also being very smart about it. If you go out to a slide share, you can search for, they have their policies up there. You can download, it's like 88 pages of the social media guidelines for the U.S. Army. And they have, what's funny, because I guarantee you don't have this problem, they have, you know, in times of peace, in times of war, if you're on the front line, they, have, they separate it, because the rules are different, obviously. You don't want to force wear a check-in from the guy, you know, on the battlefield, right? <laughs> but they, they cover that. They actually cover that, because they also don't want you checking into the base or checking off base in a foreign country is one of the things, because they don't, you know, little things like that you just don't, you don't think about. But the Army's doing it. And I love this because I got this this week. I am not an infographics guy at all. What this, though, is this is stats. The Army's sharing this now. They're sharing their success. They now have 780 bloggers for them, 31,000 posts. They have the ranks. You can see all the different things. The funniest part is the band's really popular, it seems to be looking at this chart. But they're sharing 600 video stories, 525,000 YouTube views. And I love that one, too that they've only had 525,000 views. Stop trying to think about, we need the viral video, we need a million hits. You need the views that are right. You know, that's a lot of views, but if you did the math, and I'm not good at math in my head, that's not a whole lot of views per video, and that's okay. They're all right with that, and I love, and this, you cannot see it, but it's at bit.ly slash army strong info. Is, this is out there, it's public, it's not proprietary. Um, they put it out there to show, and I wish more companies did this, I wish more companies shared this sort of data. You know, this is you know three years launched in 2008. You know, and they're sharing this. You know, some people would think, oh, that is, is that enough? Is it you know too little? Great, great stuff. Okay, now we're getting some common sense. If you are a brand, if you care at all about engaging with people, and you are not listening, you're dead. Listening is the most important skill you can have in social media. There are tools out there that can help you. There are simple search and, search and RSS and Google Alerts. There's things like Radian 6 and other tools that you can set up. There's all, every level of budget. But you have to be listening. Oh, and I also have to forget, I usually not, show nothing but happy slides. You know, I don't slam companies. But we're going to pick on some people today. I forgot to warn you. So if, if one of these is your client or your brand, I'm sorry. You messed up. Let's learn and do something better. So about a month ago, I'm sitting on my couch Saturday morning, and I'm like, my wife goes, hey, why don't we go to New York for Christmas? We've never taken the kids. Let's do that. Well, that would be awesome. The kids have never been to New York. I'm like, crap, where are we going to stay? So I, I just, it was 7 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. I'm just kicked back on my iPad and said, I need a hotel in New York. Where can I go? And I instantly got all kinds of people. Twitter is such a great focus group. You can throw anything out there and people will answer. All kinds of answers, all kinds of things. And then all of a sudden this one pops up from a hotel. I was like, whoa, what are you doing on at 7 o'clock in the morning? I wasn't thinking about this. And it's the Algonquin Hotel. They said, we vote the historic Algonquin Hotel in the heart of Manhattan. What activities do you hope to do with your family? Now, 
this is a this could be considered a little little spammy. I mean, I threw it out there, right? You know, they're pitching themselves. Some people would argue, you know, one of my rules is share or solve, don't shill. This is a little bit shilling, but they asked a question. I'm like, all right, now let's test them. So I replied back, and I said, yeah, I want to go see a show. We're taking the kids in New York, and they wrote right back. They have this custom celebration package. Somebody was listening. They were the only hotel that listened. And then I still took it further and asked them, and they said, why, well, thank you, Cece, because I told them. Kudos to your team for being awake, listening, and engaging this time of the morning. And they said, you know, why thank you. Good old-fashioned manners. I thank them. They thank me. It was all happy. Now, in all honesty, I did not expect any hotel to reply on a Saturday morning at 8, 7 a.m. There's no need for that. But what sucks and what is pathetic is I never heard from another hotel. I threw a softball out. I want a hotel in New York. Any hotel could have said, Pick me, pick me. And these are the only ones that did. Listening in real time is great, but it's hard. I get that. This little hotel, the fact that they, I found out later because I talked to the woman, you know, she works for a whole bunch of hotels doing social media monitoring and engagement for them. So she, that's her job, and she does it. She happened to be up too having her morning coffee and saw that and, and jumped on it. But the fact that no one responded after days really bothered me. I was sh it, it happens a lot. I'm sure you've all done this. You know, if you have a Twitter account, if, if I find that you, you're a brand and you have a Twitter account, I will always use it, just to see if you're paying attention. You've got to be listening out. You have to be paying attention. Even as a blogger, if you don't have your name and your, you know, your posts and your titles and those sort of things in searches, you know, the vanity searches, you, you're really doing a disservice. You've got to pay attention to what people are saying about you, good and bad, because you want to know it. But, and, I, and by, by the way, I did not go with them, because they were too expensive. They were ridiculously expensive. But, but it didn't matter. They still, I still, I, I considered them. I checked them out. They were just, they're a really expensive, you know, exclusive boutique hotel. But everybody always asks, and no, we, we didn't end up going with them. But they still, we had this great brand response. I, I want to go there now because I, I, I just want to see it. It's like a really nice, ritzy little hotel. So we all make messes, right? We all make mistakes. We all fall down and do things. And no, the next slide isn't what you're thinking, Justin. I know a whole bunch of people are like, oh, we know what's coming. There's, there's sauce all over this little baby. We'll get to that. Trust me, we're not going to not touch that. We all make messes, right? We all make mistakes. We're humans. We screw up. Brands screw up. Individuals screw up. It's human nature to screw up, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's n you can try to prevent it all you want. We're all going to make mistakes. In it's how you bounce back from the mistake, how you own it, what you do after the fact, that makes the world a difference. So how many people saw this mistake a couple weeks ago? D does everybody know what this is? If you don't, it's okay. This is Chapstick. This is a Chapstick ad. You know, wh where do lost Chapsticks go? Be heard at Facebook.com slash Chapstick. Right? Just an ad, no big deal. The problem was, is that somebody didn't like this ad. Um, and she wrote a blog post about it. Thought it was a little offensive, it was you know, objectifying women, you right? Okay, and she wasn't happy about it, and she told people. She wrote a blog, she said, I don't like this. N not a big deal yet, you know, it's not gonna go crazy yet. But then more people got a hold of it, and then started commenting on Chapstick's Facebook page. Be remember here, be heard at facebook.com. If you ask for opinions, if you ask for feedback, it is never, ever going to be always nice. The internet is full of trolls and haters and different opinions, different people. You know, this ad didn't offend me, but it offended somebody else. One campaign, you never know what somebody's going to get upset about. But the, where they fell down, this isn't the mistake. I would argue the ad's not the mistake. The mistake was these idiots. Facebook.com, be heard. People went and let them know what they thought. And they started deleting all the comments. Verbatim, just started delete, 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 anything even remotely negative. They deleted them. And they kept, people noticed this and started going, why are you deleting the comments? And they started deleting those. You do not do that. Now, granted, I'm sure some of those were just blatant, you know, you guys suck, you know, no constructive. And let's face it, I am a big proponent, if you have a brand on Facebook, set guidelines. You know, call, living room rules, one of my clients wanted to call them. Put up, you know, I had a client that said any swear word will be deleted. 
And it was tough because they were a retail brand with young kids, you know, high school kids. And they'd be like, this is the bomb. This is shit. I love it. And we had to delete it because their rule was any swearing. But they put it right up there front and center. They said, these are the guidelines of our site, just so you know. But Chapstick opened it up and said, please come tell us what to say. And then they started deleting it. And then even worse, they, 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 at the end, they kind of said, well, we were only deleting. They kind of hid behind it. They're like, we were only deleting stuff that was derogatory and mean. You can't do that. The conversation online is not always going to be favorable for your brand or for you, for that matter. And I'd argue, it's one of those interesting arguments that, you know what, if you don't have haters, you know, Peter shanked me if you didn't see it, you know, haters are going to hate. And if you don't have haters, you're not taking an opinion. You're being a little too vanilla. Now, I don't always want haters, but I have them from time to time, and I know I've, I've put my opinion out there, and they're going to come. But if you're going to ask for conversation online, which I hope you want, if you're, not online, if, you, if you're online and you're not expecting a conversation, get the hell offline. You shouldn't be doing it. But if you open up something like this, don't do something stupid like the deleting. And then the fact that they didn't like say, wow, we made a mistake. It's amazing. It's an amazing word. Sorry, right? Sorry, we screwed up. Sorry, we'll try to do better next time. I understand there's legal reasons some people get scared of that. There's other reasons, but I'm sorry. We're humans. This is where the common sense comes in, the good old-fashioned manners. Sorry is not easy for anybody to say, right? What was that song? You know, I should play that. You want to sing? You know, sorry seems to be the hardest word. They blew it. So here's another example. Red Cross. This came out last, last uh, winter. This came out on the Red Cross Twitter stream, right? Ryan found two more bottles of dog fi Dogfish Head's Midas Touch Beer. When we drink, we do it right. Getting slizzard. I didn't know what the hell slizzard meant. That means they get, that's what all the cool kids talk, call getting drunk these days. My kids are not old enough for me to know that yet. Thank God. This goes out on the American Red Cross Twitter stream. They have all kinds of followers. They are the American Red Cross, right? Now, what did they do to react? All hell could have broken loose here, right? That poor girl, and I know it's a girl, because what happened was this girl you know, on Hootsuite where you can manage multiple Twitter accounts, be very careful with multiple Twitter accounts. Uh, I mean, I've done it, and thank God they're all my brand, but I've, I've done it before. She posted on her own personal one and said, oh, my God, I'm going to be fired. I just screwed up. American Red Cross did the best possible thing. We've del Whoa. We'll get to that guy in a minute. We've deleted the rogue tweet, but rest assured the Red Cross is sober and we've confiscated the keys. <laughs> now, if the American Red Cross can have a sense of humor, everybody knew something went wrong. Everybody knew something wasn't right. And they handled it so well. And the American Red Cross, actually, is one of the most savvy organizations I've seen in social media. I've met the woman who runs the Chicago office. They meet every Monday morning to figure out what news hooks they can play with. When Transformers was filming in Chicago and destroying the streets, they wrote a whole blog post talking about how if aliens do invade, we'll, we'll be here to help you with relief. When Twilight came out, they used it as a blood drive. I mean, they are all over this stuff. And this is honesty, right? They, they, and they did delete the original one. The, woman still, the girl still has her job. She's a volunteer. What are they going to do to her? But they, they were so good about it. And the best part about this story, and I couldn't find the tweet. It bothered me. Dogfish had... Head Ale got a hold of this, and they tweeted out, hey, American Red Cross is having a rough day. Why don't you go donate to them? And when you do, tag it with Get Slizzard so they know that they got it. And they, they, they got over $10,000 in donations. So it all worked out. Owning up, saying, whoops, we made a mistake, worked for them. It's not always going to be all touchy-feely like that, but they jumped up and they owned it. So if you're going to make a mistake, because we all do, be OK. We've gotten so damn lazy, right? Brands, super lazy. Agencies, super lazy. And oh, I, I forgot to preface this, sorry. I ran a marketing agency. I, I, I come from that side. We were lazy too sometimes. And things like this make us wicked lazy, right? I hadn't seen this, by the way. This is on their site, Measuring Influence Since 2008. I love they use that as a tagline. Clout's easy to pick on, right? Because they're out there, I love clout. I love the idea of clout. I don't give a crap about my score. I don't give a crap about those other things. And it's one tool out of a lot of them. This is a great place to start. Check it out. You know, I, I need influencers. I need dads. Show me the dads on you know, have clout scores. It's a great place to start. 
But then you got to go do the legwork and find out more about that, right? And this cracked me up. I added this slide today because, so I launched this passionhit.tv, right? I set up a Twitter account. I've sent three tweets in the past two days. I got a 17. <laughs> what the hell? I, I, I was like, wait, this would be perfect. I should go check it out. I didn't know what it was. I was like, and it was funny because when I signed up, it, it does have a one. I'm like, oh, that, no, that makes sense. I can't use it. But then when I saw that I had a 17, and that it went up plus three in the past one day. I don't know what I did. Maybe it's people, it's gotta be people like retweeting my announcement of launching it. Passionhit.tv has zero influence. It really doesn't. But what, what I hate about clout and peer index and all these other things, there's been these tools around for a long time, is that they allow us to get lazy. When you're trying to find people to reach out or people to share your content with, we just rely on one service or one number. And it's a great tool, it's a great starting place. But I know David, I was talking to David, um, David Armano, thank you. Uh, and he was showing me how, he's got a slide, so definitely check out his after the fact, of how they do it at Edelman. And he was saying, we look at all the services. We look at clout, we look at all those things. But then we actually, you know, down in the muck, go read their blogs, really see what they're talking about. Are they, is the writing style what we want with our brand? Is this, you know, is this the type of person we've reached out to in the past and they didn't like us? You know, well, they do a lot of work. A lot of grunt work. I've put together influencer programs. I've put together advocacy programs. It's a t lot of work. I mean, my interns hate me when we do this because I send them out to do research. But we've gotten lazy. We don't want to do the research. And it's, it's really, really too bad. And I please, by the way, when you get your virtual tickets to watch the sessions after the fact, make sure you watch Tom Webster's. He gave a keynote on Friday. He talked this in much, much, much more depth. And it was, it was so true. So, but just we've gotten way too lazy. You have to know your audience. If you do not know who you're reaching out to, if you do not know who you're pitching, good luck with that. The shotgun approach doesn't work. The shotgun approach is going to backfire. I guarantee it. It's going to hurt you. It's not going to be fun if you don't know who you're reaching out to. This, <laughs> I had to, I'm so mad Tom's not here. I put infographics in the deck just for him. This is an example of an infographic that knows their audience. Can anybody guess what, who this might be for? Who? No, not Hirsch. Hirsch would be a good one. Y yell. You're getting closer. Whoop, wrong way. This is for REI. And I thought, it was funny, because I saw this infographic, and uh, there's, there's a blog out there that's just infographics, and I always get a good laugh out of it. And I'm like, who's doing Samoas? They know their audience, right? This makes sense to their audience. It, it's actually for REI.com slash family camping. It's even more specific. They produced a piece of content for an exact audience they were going after. Now, I think this would be like the perfect sort of thing to start going at finding moms and dads who are into camping and send this to them, because I think it's fun. It would be some great publicity for them. And maybe they've done that. I haven't seen it. Um, I would love to be on that list since I'm a huge camper and I'm a dad, but they, they know their audience. They looked at it, they figured out you know, this will work in our audience. And what I'm talking about is when you're creating content, think about who you're creating it for. Are you trying to reach a certain, certain group of people? How are they gonna react? What are they gonna do? The more you know about your audience, the better. Knowing a clout score, knowing their page rank or their technorati rank only goes so far. Knowing exactly the type of, where the people hang out, what are they doing? Um, I have, a, great, I have uh, a good friend, her name's Kristen, she does the Manic Mommies podcast. And she gets really mad because she gets you know, pitched all the mommy stuff. And she's, but she's like the biggest, I'm telling you right now, if there's anybody here who has a client that's a comic book or anything like that or a movie fan, Christian is the biggest geek when it comes to that stuff. And she never ever gets, and she writes about it going, please pitch me. And she's yet to, she never gets reached out to. Because, you know, somebody just saw, oh, she's a mom. She does the mom, you know, Manic Mommy's podcast. I got to send her diapers all the time or, you know, invite her to fashion and spa things. Yes, I'm being overgeneral, but these are real pitches I get as a dad blogger. So... Um, I, I speak from the heart. I, I, I did get one the other day, too, that said, Dear Hot Mom. So <laughs> I felt good. I was like, all right. I am not a hot mom. I'm sorry. <laughs> do the work. You have to do the work, right? This stuff, there is so much online that is not fun. It is not sexy. It is not glamorous. It's just slugging away in spreadsheets and looking at stuff online. It is not fun. Nobody likes that part, right? But you have to do the work. Now, this next slide could go for any one of these rules. It could go for any of them, right? This 
is not doing the work. This is not doing the work. This is at spamming people. This was something Ragu did recently where they at spammed a whole bunch of uh, dads. An at spam is something, I don't, it's not a real term, it's something I use. It's when you just send at messages to people over and over that you've never interacted with. They didn't do the work. They spent five minutes, five minutes writing these five tw four tweets saying, you know, to personalize it a little bit more, it would have gone so far, so much further. And yeah, there's a lot wrong with this campaign in my mind, but we're not going to go into that because I don't want, I, I'm beyond it. But the fact that they didn't do the work on this, and by the way, well, this all points to this great campaign they're doing. They have an amazing, Ragu has an amazing campaign they're doing called Mom's the Word, where they're trying to get, you know, ed, you know any parents in the room will tell you, getting kids to eat is hard, right? I mean, they're picky, they're finicky. They've got this great program where they've got all these great moms doing these videos talking about, well, here's how I get my kid to eat, or here's what I do. Great idea. Awesome idea. But when, they try to, when you go from one audience to another audience, it's not always going to work. And they thought this was going to work getting all us dads on board with the program. And it's a great program. I honestly, heartfelt, believe it's a great program. But the way they market it, the way they tried doing this and being lazy and taking the easy road, they blew it. They completely blew it. And just Google, and I don't want to go any more into that than that, because I wasn't happy about it. All right. I love this quote. Nobody reads ads. People read what interests them. Sometimes it's an ad. Keep this in the back of your mind, because I could change the word ad to content, change it to blog post, change it to video. This works for everything, right? People read, view, watch, share what interests them. When you're trying to get someone to talk about your product, if you're trying to get, attract something, make sure you're reaching it. This is why I put all these common sense things in. You've got to do the research to make sure you're reaching out to someone who might be interested. Now, I know you can't always know what's going to interest them, but that's what's going to get shared. And I want to show an ad, and hopefully the audio works. This is the best ad I've seen in a long time. And it's an ad. It's three minutes long. I watch it over and over again because I love it. I think it's just really well done. And it is not going to appeal to some of you. I guarantee half this room is going to watch this and go, what the hell is going on in this? Even, you'll get the end, like, trust me. But you're not going to know what this is. You're not going to understand it. But they made this ad for their audience. They knew exactly who was going to be turned on by this. So let's uh, check this ad out. Whoa! Stay calm, man. Ma'am? I'm flying over the middle of the Rubukami Desert, looking for some lost city in the sand. Next thing I know, plane's going down. I'm hanging like a rag doll at 30,000 feet, just trying to hold on. And a plague on every corner. When half the city hated me, and the other half wanted me dead. He brought out my good side. I'm telling you, war has changed. So you do what you have to. I'm no hero. But whatever good I've done, it was him. It was in the days of suffering when the gods made their might known. When no mortal dared stand up to Zeus. He did. Omaha! Pinned down on that godforsaken beach. Thinking if I lay there, I'll maybe die. But if I get up, there ain't no maybe about it. Then one man broke through. Michael! Michael. Michael. When the Templars murdered my family. When the whole bloody world's gone crazy. Hellcat, Sector 9, to Michael. Michael! To Michael! For all he does. For all of us. To Michael. To Michael! To Michael! To Michael! So for those of you who don't get it, those are some of the most famous gaming characters out there. If you're a gamer, 
and you see those guys alive, it's like, holy crap, that's so, there's, you know, it's amazing. My son was going crazy over this. But the other thing about it that's really good is they made the, they made the customer the hero, right? It's all about Michael. You, if you make the customer the hero, if you make the donors of your nonprofit the hero, the students at your school the hero, whatever content you create, whatever it is, it's going to do very, very well, I promise you. And whenever I get asked, well, we don't have a story to tell, I'm like, I just, I, I cringe. And I just say, listen, at a minimum, find your customers, ask them to tell the story. Why do they buy your product? Why do they donate to you? you know, whatever is right for who you are. Get them to tell that story and start there. Everybody's got that story. And it's funny, I'm still trying to find, there's this whole urban legend now about this ad that supposedly, and this is an urban legend, I can't find any confirmation, I even know the folks at Sony, I'm like, can you tell me if this is true? Supposedly Michael was like this huge fan in, in the forums, the name Michael, and this kid, he died of cancer. And they did it kind of like an internal tribute. If that's true, it's even more kick-ass. So I hope, I, I hope it is, I like to think in my heart it is. But I love that ad, and now they're doing things like, they're running it during football games, during Sunday night football, it's the first time I saw it, and they're putting it out online, and they're running it in front of action movies. It's gen they're doing a really good job with it. So three final things. You have to know where you are going. I need to make a viral video. We need to blog. We're going to do some podcasting. Why? I don't know. You have to know. I've had that happen. Anybody here who works with clients or has a boss has had that moment where they come in because they read an article or saw a blog post, watched a television show, and said, we need to be doing this. What, you know, fill it in with whatever shiny toy is that week. We've all had that moment. Ask why then. It's not going to go well. They're not going to like you asking why. But six months down the road, when you've thrown away money and time and resources, to have that conversation then is even worse. Challenge if you're working with clients. Ask why. Where are we going to go? How are we going to measure it? What are we, you know, what are we trying to accomplish? Why are we making, you know, figure out if it's to raise, raise money, is it to raise newsletter subscribers, is it to sell product, what is it? Figure out how you're going to measure, because if you don't know where you're going, you are going to fail. This goes both ways. This is, if you take anything away, I mean, we're supposed to be respectful of each other, right? And this goes both ways. And what I mean by both ways is for the content creators towards the brands and for the brands towards the content creators. If I ever hear again, Oh, it's, this, is, this is changing, but even recently I went to an event and, they, and I said, I checked into the media tent because I was down there as media, and they said, oh, you're a blogger. And I just went, oh, I'm going to kill you. I, I just, I didn't, I was like, are you kidding me? And I went to the event organizers who flew me down to go to this event. It was from the event, I was like, oh, have respect both ways. And, and you know what, and I know that's hard sometimes because we all, we all have reactions. That ragu story, right? I reacted really harshly towards them. And when I woke up in the morning, I felt horrible about it. That's why I wrote another post and said, you know what, I was really mean and I, you know, I tried to be nice, you know, because I was like, I'm not respecting them. My parents raised me better than that, right? It's a golden rule. Every, everybody's been taught that at some point in their lives and we all forget it to an extent or another. But please, um, please, let's have some respect towards each other. There's none of this A-list, B-list bullshit. It is all, we're all people, okay? When you are reaching out online, you're reaching out to a human, you're reaching out to a person. I don't care how much money you have in your bank account. I care if you're a good person. I will not work with brands if I, if I don't like what they're doing. I've, you know, I've had that, there's, there's certain brands that I just don't like, whether it's their politics, or their, you know, there's lots of reasons. I just don't like it. I won't work with, don't sell yourself out either. Respect yourself. Do not sell yourself out for the quick buck or the text link or whatever. People are trying to get that stuff every day. Respect yourself, please. And finally, have fun. This stuff is a blast. This is me and my co-author, Ann Hanley. If you, do, if you don't know, if you, Ann's pretty straight-laced, pretty chill. I love this photo. This is for, we're doing our actual author photos, and this is the one I use because I breathed in her ear a little too close, and she made a crack, and we laughed. But we're having fun, and I share this because if you're not having fun, do this. It goes back to the beginning. There are days you're going to wake up, you are not going to want to create another blog post. God forbid you have to edit a video or a podcast. Those are those days that you're just going to dredge and you're going, ugh. But if you're passionate about it and you work really hard, you can push through it and you can have fun. So thank you very, very, very much. I appreciate your time. If there's any questions, on the mic.
No questions? Well, then crap, maybe you can run to Falls. Falls has got bourbon in his. You can run and... And I'm very disappointed. I, I scheduled a tweet at 11.30 to go out that said, can somebody in Jason Falls' session please bring bourbon to my room? And nobody did. Hi, I have a question. Um, my name is Tia, and um, I'm a writer. And I heard you make some comments about clout. Mm -hmm. And I thought I saw the clout symbol on your Twitter yep. ID. So given what you said, I was wondering why was the clout symbol on your Twitter ID? Yeah. It, so what it is, that's a plugin for Chrome, and it automatically adds clout scores anywhere that it can, it can find you. So like on my Twitter stream, the clout scores show up. Co-tweet adds, Co-tweet has it built into it. Um, Hootsuite actually, I know Hootsuite actually has a filter which kind of shocked me that you can actually set it in your company to say, you know, basically, uh, you know, like, this is urgent, not urgent, or, you know, whatever, I don't know what the levels are, based on clout score automatically. So I put it in there, I put it in there just because I'm curious to see what clout puts on people. It cracks me up, it's, it's the only way I ever know what my clout score is, because I don't go to clout that often, and it always cracks me up to see it go up and down. And I, I, it's a plugin that I have on my browser, because I find it fascinating. Okay, well, just a comment, just as someone seen that on your Twitter ID, I heard you say here, I don't give a crap about my clout score. That's what I heard you say. I don't give a crap about my clout score, yes. Okay. You heard right. So when I saw it, I was thinking, I wonder why a man would put his clout score who doesn't give a crap because if I hadn't heard you say that and I had only gone to your Twitter stream. Oh, no, that doesn't appear to anybody else. Oh, oh no, 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 okay. no. Yeah, God, no. Yeah. People who put my clout score is on there should be punched. Okay. No, no. That, 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 what that is is so if you were looking at your, if you were looking at your Twitter stream on, in Chrome, it just puts the little clout scores next to everybody you look at. Everybody gets that. Well, thanks for that differentiation oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. because, A, I've never seen it on anybody's cloud yeah, yeah. Um I haven't installed Google Chrome, and I saw it again on um, the Red Cross. Yeah, and it shows up on every screenshot that you saw, I take. That you used, and I was like, yeah. I guess it's on No, there. that's a great question. Oh, yeah, because I, and it's fascinating because you see brands or individuals, and I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great, great question. No. Yeah, and please, I actually had someone the other day, an individual pitch me for a project that I was looking for people for. And they actually put in the conversation to me, my clout score is. And I was just, I went, dude, that doesn't matter. Your other stuff is what matters. Thankfully, he had some other stuff that was great, but don't lead with that, please. Hi, Susie. Love hey. to talk. Um, so I work with a lot of small businesses, and, you know, that's a big struggle for content and creating content. They're, overworked, they're stressed, yeah. and so, uh, you know, you gave some, I loved all those examples of different content you can create. Do you have, like, a rule of thumb for, like, you know, how much time should someone be spending creating content on, the, and then working their business and yeah. doing, I mean, I don't know if there's any good. Yeah, um, the slide that I usually start with is, it's a big silver bullet, mm -hmm. and there's not one, <laughs> and, unfortunately, and what I mean by that is, unfortunately, every company's got to figure it out, because there's not one right answer. I, I, I always say, you know, at a minimum, when you come in in the morning to the shop or, you know, whatever it is, your office, whatever it is, at a minimum, at, you should be looking at your searches that you've got set up, you know, whether it's Google Alert or Twitter, or at message, whatever, however you, whatever is right for you. At a minimum, you've got to look at them first thing in the morning and the last thing before you leave the office, at a minimum. Now, creating content, I, I, I'm a big advocate of, you know, setting aside some time, saying, you know, Mondays from noon to two is when I'm going to write my blog post. I know there's this woman, um, Lisa Johnson, who runs a fitness studio, and she's a trainer in Massachusetts. It's her. That's all she does. And she writes all her blog posts on Sunday evening, and then puts them in. She sits down Sunday afternoon, writes her blog posts for the week, puts them in there and timestamps them so they go out over the course of the week, because she doesn't have time, because she's training clients. And that's what works for her. I tried doing that at one point. I said, Monday afternoons are going to be my content creation days. And it never worked out for me. And so it's just kind of, you've got to figure out what works for you. But small businesses have got to do it too. And they've, they have a huge opportunity to do stuff. I know um, my wife loves this spa in our town. And it's a three-woman shop. And she found out what I did. And she's like, hey, can I pick your brain? You know, we've all had that conversation. And I said, yeah. And she, she wanted to raise, um, she, it was coming up on Valentine's Day. She's like, what could I do to get some more customers? And for her, I suggested set up a Facebook ad. Mm -hmm. I said, spend a little bit of money, target it to only men, and say, have you gotten your woman something yet? You know, and she spent 50 bucks for the, for the week, 
set up this one little ad, and she got six new clients at 50 bucks a piece. She, it worked great for her, and now she does it every, she does it the week before. She targeted the towns around her. You know, that's content too. You know, some people forget that ads can be content, but I think you just need to sit down and really figure out what works for you, because it is content and social media, it's not money you gotta worry about, it's the time you gotta worry about. I know that, I never have enough time. So, small businesses, but they, but they can't use that as an excuse either. You have to, I have, I'm on the board of a nonprofit, and they're like, we don't have time. I'm like, you have to make the time. You have to make the time to do this, and it will be, some, that's why I talk about know where you're going, because you don't, especially small businesses, don't have the luxury of being able to waste time or resources. Every dime, every minute counts. So be strategic about it. Oh, she's running. I'm excited. Woohoo! Okay. Um, when Google Plus came out, a lot of people started writing about social media fatigue. Mm -hmm. And um, I was curious if you have any tips to share about not only just kind of managing everything mentally, but also strategically from a time management standpoint. Because sometimes the day passes and someone says, what did you do? And I say, I, clicked a lot I don't of things. know. Yeah. I did something every second, but I don't know because it's so easy to get lost in all of this. So any, any suggestions you have on time management with content would be yeah. awesome. Yeah, so I have those days too where I, my wife will come home because I work from home. My wife will come home and be like, so what did you do today? And I'm like, I don't know. I clicked links. I talked. I talked to a lot of people. Um, but one of the uh, – my easy – first I'll take the social media fatigue thing because I get it all the time. And the easiest way to get around social media fatigue is get the hell offline. Go play with your kids. Go for a walk. Watch a movie without the iPad in your lap. Um, you know, and, it, and it's hard. Trust me. This stuff is addictive. We all love it. We wouldn't be here if we didn't have a little bit of an issue with this stuff, right? I'm okay with that. But the best, seriously, go for a walk and leave the phone. Uh, you know, go to dinner. You know, it, the world will not end. You won't miss. And that's hard. And I... Some days I'm better about that than others, but unplugging is the best possible thing you can do. Or unplugging to the extent of bring your phone, but only answer it if it rings. You know, no tweets. You know, because that way, if you know someone dies or something, get a hold of you. I mean, but you don't need to check it. As far as time management, take some. I, my favorite tool in the world, and for PC people, I'm sorry, it doesn't. Is a program called Freedom. Does anybody here use Freedom? No. Oh, okay. Freedom is. I think it's like ten dollars. Shareware, but what it does is you say, how much freedom do I need? Put in 60. You hit enter. You actually have to put in your password for administrative purposes because it turns off the internet. It blocks it, and you cannot hack it. You can't touch it. You can, you can turn off the computer and turn it back on. That's the only way to make that clock go away. And I, I use it as a writer. I use it all the time. Because I'm like, because it's so easy to go, did anybody say anything on Twitter? Is there an email? I can't do the whole check email twice a day. I tried that. I need it constantly. But the, it's just one, that's one, for me, what works. I also do a lot in the morning. When I first, I wrote a post about this recently. When I get up in the morning, I don't go near my computer, and I only touch my iPad, and I try not to do email. I try to get some of the socializing out of the way first and clear the inbox out. Um, I wish I had more tips for time management because I'm fighting it every day. It, it is, and it is. Things like Google Plus getting added. It's another site i got to check every Five seconds, you know, that little red, that damn little red square that shows you the number of updates. Every time I see nine plus, I'm like, I have to click on it. You know, I just, we all have that problem. But yeah, I mean, but you have to manage it. Figure out what works for you. Figure out where to spend your time. But definitely check out Freedom. And there's another version, I wish I could think of it, but I was hoping someone would say, yeah, but I use this other one. There's another tool that only turns off, it, it's coded to block Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus. So like, you still have the internet for other things. But that's, I was like, I could always find a way. You know, email is still a distraction, but freedom I, I love because it cuts off everything. And um, thanks to Julian Smith who actually introduced me to it. And it's funny because it gets done and you can actually, it says, do you want to tweet how much, how much productivity I just gave you? I'm like, that's such a good little marketing thing. Now that you have the internet back, this is the first thing you want to do to hit that tweet button. So yeah, check that out. All right. So have a great, there's a gr all kinds of awesome sessions today, all kinds of great stuff. I know the type, the type, it's not type, I keep wanting to say type A mom, but it's not that, it's just type A. The parenting track is great, all the other tracks are great. Thank you very, very much for coming today.